Yesterday Frontier revealed new features coming next week to Elite Dangerous Odyssey and Elite Dangerous Horizons. In this video we're breaking down for you everything we just learned. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe. Remember to click the bell icon and select all notifications and to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. Community managers Zach and Bruce hosted the regular Super Cruise News livestream yesterday afternoon and as part of the show they revealed the expected launch window for update 9, some of the new features that will be included and interviewed two of Frontiers developers about their work on Elite Dangerous. So what did we learn? Well we knew that patch 9 for Elite Dangerous Odyssey was fairly imminent as it had been billed previously as early December. We now know that whilst no specific date is yet set the update is scheduled to arrive next week. We already know that update 9 includes the new SRV. No details are yet available on that as it's expected that Frontier will want to introduce and talk about that particular feature in isolation on its own dedicated stream. However we did learn about the two other major new features arriving next week. Firstly the new multi limpic controller module will be arriving with update 9 and importantly the new module is landing for both versions of the game Elite Dangerous Horizons on console and PC and Elite Dangerous Odyssey on PC. Zach and Bruce spoke to senior game designer Darren Halil who had been working on the much requested module and he explained how it was going to work. In essence the module will be available in different role specific flavours and, as the name implies, will perform the role of many different limpet controllers at the same time. The current task specific limpet controllers will remain in the game and will be better and more efficient at performing their one task than the multi controller is. Think of the new controller as being a kind of jack of all trades but master of none. The original controllers being very laser focused on just one task but being better at that task as a result. You will only ever be able to install one of the multi limpet controllers in each of your ships at a time and they come in the following flavours. Xeno, Rescue, Mining, Operative and Universal. The team showed a table of the functions associated with the new role specific controllers which you can see on screen now. The Xeno controller can program limpets for decontamination, research and repair. The rescue controller can program limpets for fuel, hatch breaking and repair. The mining controller can program limpets for collecting and prospecting. The operative controller can program limpets for collecting, recon and hatch breaking and the universal which is only available in size 7 can perform all of the functions. The controller will only allow you to add a single one of its functions per fire button. So for example running the repair controller you won't be able to fire off repair and fuel limpet from the same button press. They'll need to be set against two separate fire buttons. The multi limpet controller has been a long requested feature from the community and it'll be interesting to see where in the game it finds its place and how the existing controllers fit around it. The team then spoke with principal gameplay programmer Dominic Corner about the second new feature coming next week. From update 9 mission givers can now potentially appear at an odyssey settlement and, when spoken to, offer a mission to a player. The mission giver can apparently be any random person walking around within a settlement but they will be shown on your compass as having a mission available. The mission givers will be staff members for the dominant faction at the settlement and will give missions that serve that faction specifically and the BGS conditions affecting that faction will govern what missions will be generated. While you're at the settlement, either having just picked up the mission or returning to drop the mission back off, the NPCs themselves are still vulnerable. That's to say, if they're killed by you or another player, you essentially won't be able to pay that mission back in. We're not sure yet what the end result of that action would be, whether the mission immediately fails or you simply can't hand it in. Clearly some science of the slightly murdery variety is needed there to get some solid answers. 
If you have a positive result it's worth making sure that they get to see the end of their shift with all their faculties intact, in working order and with no new plasma induced facial orifices being present. This new update to the Odyssey settlements and mission system will in principle at least see the games thousands of settlements turned into mission hubs. It should certainly add an extra layer of dynamism to the mission experience and it'll be interesting to see if and where FDev take this implementation of the mission system in future updates. Another important update we have for you, Frontier have announced that this Friday the 3rd of December they will be releasing their end of year community update. Talking about the year that has just gone and what to expect from them as we move into 2022. These updates almost always these days include some important nuggets of information and possibly even details on unannounced features. So as soon as we have that we'll bring it to you here. What are your plans for the new Multilimpic controller? Are you already planning a rework of any role specific ships you own? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video consider subscribing to the channel and maybe take a look at one of our other videos linked on screen right now.